اشكرك على المقابله دي بدك بالعربي ولا بالانجليزي؟ بوث اشكرك على المقابله دي واشكرك على الترحيب وعلى الوقت اللي بتقدمه لك الله يخليك ذا مين ثينج وانا توك اباوت از يور ارتيكل منشند ان بيرنارد لويس ريسبونس تو بروفيسور ادوارد سعيد سو اتس اورينتاليزم اند اورينتاليزم ريفرس هنحكي بالعربي وبالانجليزي بعض الحاجات تكون اوضح بالعربي وبعض الحاجات اوضح بالانجليزي. سو ليتس توك اباوت ات ازاي شفت حضرتك uh, كتاب ادوارد سعيد وازاي يو بيرسيفد ات از كريتيك اوف اورينتاليزم. ليت مي تيل يو ا ليتل بيت اوف باك جراوند فيرست اوف اول اي فيرست ميت ادوارد ان 1970 ات كولومبيا اند وين اي ميت هيم It had to do with, of course, the Palestinian uh, resistance movement after the defeat of uh, 1967. Uh, we're all, you know, doing something to help, you know, redress the balance, the situation. Okay, and uh, we're all uh, then attached to, you know, the, the, the new phenomenon of the Palestinian uh, resistance. And of course, he was very involved. And he had written that famous uh, piece of his in the Columbia Review uh, about his awakening, so to speak, because uh, before the 67 de- defeat, he regarded himself as a standard, regular uh, American professor of uh, Egyptian origin or Arab origin or uh, something like that. Uh, uh, and uh, this was about it. Uh, and uh, the shock, uh, the massive shock of uh, the, the defeat is what made this uh, qualitative and decisive change in the course of his, uh, uh, of, uh, of his life. Uh, he went back and, you know, you know re- re- he didn't know any Arabic when I, uh, I met him, for example. Uh, so, uh, and I think uh, he... Uh, learned slowly to read it, okay, and uh, to speak it, but not to speak fusha, uh, to speak, you know, co- uh, colloquial uh, a- Arabic. So it was kind of a uh, retrieval of uh, uh, himself uh, as a Palestinian, as an Arab, as a third world uh, uh, personality who is inserted, uh, you know, in, in, in the West and in the United States. And, at at, uh, at Colombia. Uh, also, I mean, for me, there was something similar happened. Uh, well, I was teaching at the American University of Beirut, uh, <coughs> and uh, uh, I re- followed uh, political developments uh, in the Arab world internationally. Uh, American politics, but I followed it more as an observer out of uh, uh, intellectual uh, curiosity, out of, of course, uh, in many ways our fate depends on many of these, on these developments. Uh, but if somebody had told me that I would be writing the kind of things I wrote after the defeat, if somebody had told me that you will be writing something like that at that time, I would say you are crazy. Because I was, again, regarded myself as a researcher and a scholar in the uh, classical mold. Uh, okay. uh, and uh, if, if someone had told me that you will be writing about, you know, a, a war and uh, defeat and uh, this I would say you know this is not my my interest I am in, in something else uh, so again I uh, you know the shock of the uh, uh, of, of the defeat of 67 the way it happened and so on and, uh, and so on was so uh, devastating okay that it also made a big change in my own uh, interest and this is for example I wrote uh, the book Naqd al-Zati Ba'd al-Hazime, Tafkritism of the Defeat, which became a very famous book and went into, I don't know, 15 printings or whatever, you know. The, the. Actually, about al-Hazime uh, of 67, now, a lot was written 
but there are th three things that remain in the collective memory of everybody. And, uh, and these are the poem of Nizar Qabbani, Hawamish ala takfir al the play of Sadullah Wannous, Haflet Samar min ajil khamsi huzayran, and my book, Nakhzati Bad Lazim. So this, you know, so this this is something that was uh, similar a little bit to what happened to uh, uh, to Edward. Okay, probably it was more drastic uh, 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 with him, considering that you know he regarded himself as an uh, an American in the first place. Okay, but, uh, uh, so that you know all these things brought us uh, uh, together and. Uh, uh, we became very good friends, and when I used to go to New York, I would stay in his house uh, with, you know, uh, and after the defeat, even, uh, I don't know if this has anything to do with it, but, you know, Edward divorced his American wife and married Mariam Ortas, who is also a neighbor of mine in Beirut. When I live, we live in Beirut, you know, the Ortas family are, you know, just around the corner. Uh, okay. So when he is in Beirut, you know, we of course see each other and visit uh, each other and so on. And uh, until uh, in 1979, Orientalism came out, and he had told me about it. And he published bits and pieces uh, of his ideas coming out in Orientalism, and went into a. Uh, some polemics with Bernard Lewis already in the New York Times Review of Books. So there was, I read. So starting from the Orientalism uh, part, right? The, the book came out? Right? Came out, yeah, but before that, there were some polemics going on in the. New York Times review of books between Edward and uh, Bernard Lewis. They were exchanging some, and of course, after the book, also they exchanged some uh, polemics on uh, on this. Now, and he had given me some chapters of the book, uh, Edward, before, which I also read. Then, when I read the book as a whole, uh, I felt quite uncomfortable about the book. Uh, I felt it could play into the hands of the easily the uh, religious right. Okay. This was my first uh, okay, uh, and that the animus against the uh, Orientalists uh, is similar to or reminded me of the harangues that our mashayikh make against Orientalism. Okay. So I, I, was, I was worried uh, uh, that this would, uh, you know, uh, yani give uh, them uh, support, unintended support from, uh, from Edward. Because he's not a right wing. Uh, no, he's right not. Certainly, okay. Yeah. Un unintended support from uh, me, uh, and of course, it comes with all the, uh, yeah, any weight and credibility but that I mean. usually comes from anything that comes from the West and comes now from Columbia University, comes from you know the United States. And it's as if these people would say, ah, well, okay, okay, there, you know, it's coming from. Uh, so this was my first, uh, I was, you know, I was not comfortable with it. Uh, I felt that, you know, what what, what you, you, you needed was a, you know, more, yani, if you want to criticize uh, 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 Orientalism, uh, fine. It's like any other field. You know, there are lots of uh, things to be said, criti critiques or uh, uh, exchanges. Mis you know, correct mistakes, whatever, whatever it is. But uh, uh, I felt there was also, you know, uh, uh, almost sometimes apologetic uh, 
uh, about uh, uh, يعني contemporary Islam uh, but we who are living in the Arab world okay, and we regard ourselves as the heartland of Islam who among us is really happy with the contemporary condition of Islam All right. So this was again. Uh, uh, then I was disturbed by uh, the theoretical f uh, frame of it. See, I mean, when I started thinking about it cerebrally in my head, uh, I was uh, disturbed by the epistemology, the underlying epistemology in the uh, uh, in the book. And of course, I knew that this was uh, written under the influence then of Foucault uh, and uh, French discourse theory. And it seemed to me that uh, uh, the dominant mode of explanation uh, in the book was in terms of the, if I want to use the Marxist uh, terminology, in terms of the superstructural factors, okay, and a marginalization of the infrastructural uh, factors. Of course, as a Marxist, who you know will emphasize uh, uh, the base, you know, uh, as the as more primary, as more determinant, and, and so on. I couldn't agree with uh, with this shift. Actually, at one point, I felt that uh, also uncomfortable because, you know, given the obsession and fascination of the Arabs with rhetoric and with words, to the point where someone like Abdullah Al Qasimi called the Arab "zahira sautiya," okay. Uh, I felt discourse theory giving so much weight uh, and ex explanative power, okay, causal power to discourse, okay, is falling back into the traditional Arab mode of regarding al khatabi okay, and uh, uh, regarding, you know. Uh, 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 words and, and so on as, you know, the uh, stuff of the world out of which... Uh, so again, I felt it, uh, it, 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 it helped the, a reactionary cause uh, in, uh, in this, again, in an unintended uh, right. way by, uh, by Edward. So I decided to write, uh, you know, a critique of the, uh, of the book. With his knowledge, with his uh, yeah, no, his no, not with his knowledge, you okay. know. But I will tell you now what happened. Okay. Uh, uh, I decided to write a critique of the book, and especially I felt that in the Arab world, the book was defended, much defended, was adopted, okay, and taken over in almost bitariya osbawiye, okay. Just because it was attacking the Orientalists, okay? just because you know there is an Western anti-Western animus in it, uh, 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 therefore we have to stand with uh, with it. So it was a very clannish adoption of the uh, uh, no of depth the book. in it, no study of the book. Hey, no, okay, no serious study of the uh, uh, of the book, and very little critical comment. All right. Uh, uh, so this uh, another uh, aspect which uh, may, and everybody was praising the book, but I, for me, for the wrong reasons, uh, it, it was being uh, praised. And so, so this, I, I decided to write my uh, my own critique of the uh, uh, of, of the book. Uh, I wrote it first in English, uh, and then Edward was then. Uh, the editor of the Arab Studies Review and the assistant editor was uh, Fuad Maghrabi down in Tennessee. He was, at the, I don't know where he is now. Okay. So I decided to send the article for publication to the Arab Studies Review. Traditionally in the world of scholarship, 
First, when you are the editor of a journal and you have a an article, say, which touches you personally, you disqualify yourself from your judgment and you pass it on to someone else to give an opinion. Edward didn't behave like that. When he got the, the, the article, he judged himself. Okay. Although, you know, normally you, you send it to someone, you know, to give a... Uh, Objectivity. A, yeah. He's very sensitive. Person. Also, yeah, yeah I, I think this is his biggest fault, I think, yeah. is that he, you know, he criticizes a lot of people, okay. He has called some of the big minds in Orientalism and so on, uh, racists and imperialists and uh, uh, lackeys for the colonialists and so on, but he can't take a word of criticism himself. Uh, also, I know that because of the conventions uh, of uh, publishing and objectivity and so on. So, in those days, when you send an article to the journal, you send the ribbon copy. Okay, so I sent the ribbon copy to the assistant editor, to Fuad Mughrabi, and sent a curtsy carbon copy to Edward. Mm -hmm. Edward disregarded all this, okay, and behaved like an editor sitting in judgment over my article, which touches him, okay, and he rejected it. Not only did he reject it, he also wrote me a uh, very angry letter. Okay, which I still have, but this is a personal communication. Okay, uh, to which I also uh, uh, replied, and my main point in the uh, re reply was, okay, I mean, why are you so upset and angry? Let's debate each other. What's wrong with that? Okay, on all these, uh, all these issues are open to uh, a variety of uh, points of view and uh, considerations and so on. Let's debate each other. Uh, after this exchange of, of letters, he broke all relations with me. He wouldn't speak to me anymore. And he, after that, he never spoke to me. And I know that sometimes we are invited to the same conferences and so on. He never came to any one of them, including one of the big uh, meetings of the uh, 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 what is it called, the Arab American. Uh, اللي كانت مرت كلوفيس مقصود رئيستها. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ADC or something like that. Uh, uh, yeah. Defamation, uh, Arab American discrimination. Uh, Anti discrimination. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. اللي كانت مرت you know yeah. هال إسلام. Yeah. Okay. She told me that it, Edward didn't come because I was there. She told me هالا. Okay. You can ask Clovis about that. Yeah. Uh, okay. He's around. Yeah. yeah. He was like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that broke a relationship. Uh, and I wrote Fuad at the time, saying, look, you know, Edward doesn't have to do very much to prove that he's an Arab. He really showed it this time, okay? I mean, the way he, rea he reacted to my critic criticism, he showed he's a true Arab, okay? You know, he can't, he can't, he took it very personally, okay? Then the article was published in uh, a journal called Khamsin. You know, I wanted to publish it quickly, and uh, Khamsin uh, was in, 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 in London, I was involved with it, so they immediately published it. Although it's, it's a peripheral journal, it's not a major journal, okay, uh, all right. But the article was very quickly picked up in the field and, you know, was circulated and became uh, one of the main, uh, as Bernard said, you know, one of the main, I, I, I don't... I, don't want to call it myself, uh, but one of the uh, main pieces on this debate in uh, on uh, Orientalism. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, then I uh, wrote an Arabic version of it and expanded it a little bit, especially at the points which interest the Arab world, you know, uh, more, and also published it in Arabic. Now, at the time, in Beirut. Elias uh, Khouri and Mahmoud Darwish were preparing the first uh, issue of Al Carmel. Uh, and they asked me to cooperate with them and so on. Uh, 
And so I gave them the Arabic version of it. They considered it, and they, again they rejected it. They didn't, you know, they didn't want to. Uh, and uh, not that they rejected it because they thought it was, you know, uh, unworthy of publication or not up to standard, but be be because of, you know, for basically political uh, environment, political reasons. I know the, the journal is a Palestinian journal, okay, and this is a critique of a, you know, very prominent Palestinian and so on. So all sorts of stories. So they didn't want to publish it. So I published it somewhere else, and again it became also uh, well known. Yeah, very well known, very famous. Okay. Actually, now that you know uh, Edward passed p passed away, I received so many you know uh, phone calls and so on and requests to you know comment and so on because th my name is very connected, very much, both here and abroad. in the West abroad yeah. uh, uh, with the Orientalism incident uh, with, with with the book. Now, uh, let me say something now about also the uh, the book. Uh, and this is something that is, uh, is not directly there in my article. I think uh, Edward, uh, being an American and a Palestinian at the same, at the same time, he was facing uh, a problem we all faced, or a question, that, uh, let us say. Now, all of vital interests of the United States, economic, oil, strategic, and so on, are all in the Arab world. But their policy okay, is so favorable and for Israel, okay, that there is a paradox, because we all agree on the premise that uh, foreign policies of states emanate from their vital interests. Okay. And here there seems to be an anomaly or a paradox, okay, is, uh, I mean, what is the, so much, what kind of an interest really do they have in, uh, in, in Israel, okay? All their interests are with us, but still their policies are all for Israel and against the Arab, uh, the Arab world. How do we explain this? The traditional explanations, of course, is the, first of all, Jewish conspiracy, for example or the elders of Zion, which are manipulating both the communists and, and the communist world and the capitalist uh, uh, world. Uh, the explanation of the, that the uh, uh, Zionist Jewish lobby in the United States has completely blinded the ruling uh, uh, elite to their interests. And if, if only the American ruling establishment sees where its real interests are, then they will very quickly come to the Arab side and abandon uh, 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 Israel. And even some have argued, of course this is a line that the Saudis liked, okay. they you know, were the purveyors of, uh, of, of that line. Even we Arabs should come to the help of the Americans to free themselves from the domination Okay, of the Jewish Zionist uh, lobby and, and, and so on. And of course, all these ex explanations were, you know, a lot of mythology, but a mythology useful to the regimes. To themselves? Yeah. To, 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 to the regimes, you know, they are allied with the United States. Yeah. Okay. So, but they have to explain also why, uh, why the alliance. So they say, but, but, but the Americans are really innocent, you see. If only we can help them to free themselves, and the rest of the uh, of the story. Well, I, I, I thought that deep down, the book on Orientalism is an attempt to answer that question. By this time, not blaming the Zionist conspiracy and so on, but blaming the cumulative effect of the discourse on the Orient and the Middle East and the Levant, which the Orientalists had produced over, uh, as they say, from the time of the Renaissance up to now. Okay. And in accordance with, of course, Foucault's uh, uh, you know, the theory of, of, of this discourse, if the discourse, you know, sort of uh, uh, gets into you, it controls you, it 
uh, you see the world only th uh, uh, through it, then your actions would flow from that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, uh, this is why at one point, for example, it seemed as if uh, uh, yani, uh, uh, the discourse of Orientalism, for example, uh, uh, generates the material interests of, say, Britain or France in our area, not the material interests, okay, are the ones which produce that kind of discourse. You, you got me? No, please explain it. Please. Yeah. Uh. Yani, uh, usually, if you have a vital material interest, say, oil here, all right, you come for that, and then you produce a lot of ideological justifications yeah. for it. Yeah. Okay. And it seemed to me in Edward it was the other way down, uh, the other way around. Okay. That the ideology was there, all right, uh, and that ideology drove them to go and get the oil. Because it much came much later on. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. And the discourse is earlier. Earlier. Or, 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 uh, earlier. Uh -huh. It was this kind of. And it's not or, or somebody, as somebody, not I, but somebody put it that it seemed as if imperialism is the highest stage of Orientalism. And using uh, Lenin's, Lenin has a small book called Imperialism, the Highest Stage of Capitalism. Mm -hmm. Somebody, you know, uh, made this uh, quip on, you know, or, uh, Edward's book is that it seems imperialism is the highest stage of Orientalism. Okay. It's not that. Imperialism generates the discourse of Orientalism, but the discourse of Orientalism generates imperialism. But for me, this was completely unacceptable. Uh, in, in Ed Edward's book is, of course, more subtle. You find parts of it that tend this way and parts of it that tend, uh, way tend th that, that way. So, I mean, there's some incoherence in, uh, um, in this. Very often he rejects the conspiracy theory, but very but the whole book can be explained. Yeah, can be explained. Yeah, exactly, as uh, 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 something like that. So I, you know, I, the, this uh, uh, you know uh, uh, discourse uh, epistemology, okay, uh, discourse being you know decisive, determinant, and so on. I re I rejected that and criticized the uh, uh, that uh, that approach by. Uh, uh, by uh, uh, by Edward, uh, and then uh, yeah, you, you know, I f felt that uh, some of the things that critical things that the Orientalists have said about us, but we as as Arabs who are doing our own self criticism, all right, we say the same thing, okay, and we can say it even you know harsher because. Uh, uh, when you are, you know, it's like when you are joking about yourself, you can do it even more harshly, okay, than when uh, an outsider is doing or, or uh, another person is, uh, uh, is, uh, is, is, is uh, doing it in, uh, in this. Uh, so my, my, th my take on the, uh, on the book especially had to do with, you know, the epistemology uh, uh, underly un underlying it in, in this. Uh, and there's no, you know, at, and at the time, and this, uh, uh, the Islamists and some of the uh, mullahs in Iran and so on, found some support for themselves or used the book easily. It lent itself. Okay, and Edward explained, I remember then, saying that this is not what I meant, this is not what I, I wanted. Then we come to the Orientalism in reverse uh, uh, aspect of it. I also felt that, you see, okay, uh, Edward was saying that uh, Orientalism had divided the world into Occident and, uh, and Orient, and either openly or implicitly, there is the superiority of the Occident over the, uh, the Orient. But I felt that in the end, in the book, okay, we did not transcend this duality. Okay, we did not go to a higher uh, uh, synthesis. Okay, again, 
يعني uh, the world is divided into Orient and Occident, and this book is defending the Orient against the Occident. It's almost doing okay, the same yeah. thing. So we could end up with, uh, you know, Orientalism in in reverse. Uh, in, uh, in reverse. Yani we, you know, uh, we can, uh, you know, do a hijab of uh, the, the, the Occident and its methods and uh, so rather than, I think, moving to a higher uh, uh, debate. Uh, debate, synthesis, transcend, yani, uh, the whole dilemma, uh, so I didn't see in the book, you know, that he indicated uh, a, a direction that we, you know, go. although there are hints, you know, in, in, in the book about, for example, uh, our common humanity, for example, okay. But this is, this is just a passing uh, uh, phrase there, or uh, rather than, you know, that our common humanity could transcend uh, or differences. Uh, yeah, this. Uh, he goes on with that later with humanism, with uh, our common humanity. Late, uh, later books. Who, uh, uh, Edward, I think in his later work, uh, he took into consideration, without ever admitting it, some of the criticisms he got for Orientalism. He certainly moderated his views, his uh, discourse theory, and Foucault. Influence, and I think he, be, you know, uh, uh, the aspects that could lend themselves uh, to the religious right and so on. All this he eventually, I think, withdrew, yeah. and that's to his, uh, that's to his credit yes. and on uh, uh, on this. So we'll go with the article. Um, You mentioned that say it doesn't belittle the achievements of uh, of the Orientalists. Well, the technical achievements. The technical achievements. The technical achievements. He doesn't deal with them very much, okay? But the fact, for example, that they you know edited so many manuscripts, they introduced all the, of course, modern methods of uh, scholarship. Uh, they you know revived uh, dead languages like you know Champollion and you know Hajar Rashid, the Rosetta Stone, and uh, etc. Uh, this, uh, but he he also I think I said this, I think he also he, he didn't discredit he, he didn't you know, but he also does not give them credit for it. He he just neglects this uh, yeah. the technical achievements, achievements of uh, of uh, the uh, Orientalists. And what I you know uh, also find lacking is that you see is that, yani um, the our mullahs and shaykhs and fuqaha and so on, of course they have massive learning, but there's no critical mind there at all. That's right. Okay. And at least the orientalists introduced okay, some uh, critical apparatuses in which to uh, deal with, uh, uh, with the uh, Texts with the traditions, with the hadith, with the okay. Now they may have, you know, they made mistakes, they misread, they okay. But the point is that there is a new, a different, and an, a, a new methodology to deal with to this. Follow. Yeah, to follow, uh, you see, rather than the uh, uh, massive learning of our uh, 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 fuqaha, but there is no real argument or. Uh, a discussion or re-evaluation or uh, okay so there is this there is assertion argument by assertion and apologetics yes yeah. so the, the i would say that the christianity is ahead of us in this matter four centuries um, and, uh, oh, yeah. oh, 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 light years uh, yeah. i mean and not christianity i mean uh, uh, yani, uh, Christian culture, or the culture in, in, in Europe, which is, you know, basic, basic Christian, was able to uh, develop these, uh, and of course, because they had the scientific revolution. I will say also from Martin Luther's Reformation. Yeah, the Reformation, and I think ultimately what, what yani, uh, yani, the Reformation, had it not been, I think, for the scientific re revolution, could have been... Evaporated. You know, eliminated, and what, what, what? Finally, I think 
you know, the decisive moment was the scientific revolution. We don't have any similar experience of reformation that we can say Hitler was a turning point. Anything similar to that? Yeah, I mean, when when uh, yeah, I mean, this I think decisive turning point. No, and that's, I think because we never had much of a scientific revolution. Uh, Do we need one? Is that that's what we're waiting for? What would be turning uh, to you know our it's the spark that will start our reformation or start to catch up? With the Western world, example. is that reformation that, that we need, or what is it? Well, certainly you need a big, uh, big reformation, especially in the theology and the, uh, and th these are things that are you know people like Muhammad Shahroor and uh, uh, Judge Ashmawi. Ashmawi and so on are groping, uh, yeah. groping for. But I think, yani, you see, if you go back to what we call our Nahda. He, that period, the uh, Abbasi period, for example. La la la. Or Nahda in the early yeah. uh, late nineteenth century, century yeah. early twentieth uh, century. century. You find uh, a whole. Uh, it's very rich in a lot of ideas. Uh, any idea, practically, uh, you know, uh, uh, you will find. Uh, embryos, okay, uh, and um, uh, seeds, okay. Whether you want the idea of socialism or constitutionalism or democracy or liberalism uh, or enlightenment or uh, the importance of science, the importance uh, uh, of uh, Darwin, you know, you will find all all these. Some of these ideas eventually evolved into movements, okay. The one idea which went nowhere was the idea of the importance of science. And listen, you have the Sarruf, okay, uh, uh, in Al-Muqtadaf, okay, emphasizing the importance of modern scientific uh, knowledge and so on. And you had others who were, for example, emphasizing uh, nationalism and emphasizing socialism. Nationalism, we had development in it. Okay. Socialism, we had development uh, in it. But in science, we had not nothing. It, 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 you know, it was aborted there. It died there. Uh, okay. So we can say there is no cont scientific cont contribution from the Muslim world or the Arab world since the maybe the Ab Abbasid period or like six centuries ago. Nothing to mention, except lately with the Nobel Prizes uh, here and there. Yeah, but it's all done in the West. It's not, you know. Yeah. Just because he happens to be a Muslim is not. Uh, <laughs> this is like uh, Abdul Salam in, uh, and, and Abdul Salam, you know, died with very with a lot of bitterness because the the Pakistanis will not really uh, help him out. No, accept yeah. him because he's Ahmadi. Yeah. Okay. He wins the Nobel Prize, but he's Ahmadi. It was the West that nourished these scholars, and yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, if they had stayed in Egypt or in Pakistan, I don't think they would do very much. Okay. Uh, you mentioned the the, the Orient constructed an academic Orientalist school, and this is the uh, Said's thesis. Uh, it's isn't it interesting that now we have an American Middle Eastern new uh, school that belongs to Said's world in a kind of like a, a kind of leftist kind of uh, like Rashidi and uh, and uh, others who are all in in uh, Said's uh, uh, world they're living in his world living in his critique of the uh, of orientalists etc and it's developed and nourished right now it's uh, well from this you see the book in terms of, of, of influence it was massive yeah okay uh, and there's no question that it uh, it uh, was a uh, awakening shock who I think in the field of orientalism, there were stirrings in it. When Said's book came in a way at the right time, uh, there were stirrings in terms of, okay, let's see, stock taking. Okay, where are we? What we have done? What we, you know. Uh, and there were already some critiques, like, for example, Anwar Abdel Malik's uh, published Critique, you know, yeah. you know, in Diogenes, I think. Uh, he published a. Uh, there were a number of indications that the field was ready for some kind of a yeah before Said and this uh, before before yeah but Said came and you know this explosion and in this it is very beneficial yeah I think yeah, Orientalism 
the training of Orientalists in area studies and so on after Orientalism is different from the way it was before uh, 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 Orientalism. And even, you know, anthropology got influenced by it and uh, political science and uh, in terms especially of sensitivity to the object that is being uh, uh, be, 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 being being portrayed. studied, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 portrayed. Uh, from uh, this point of view, yani, you know, I will never underestimate uh, uh, the significance of the uh, uh, of, of the of, of the of the book uh, in, in this. Uh, and uh, some even, you know, for example, the field of what is called subaltern studies. Uh, traces itself to uh, Said, its origins uh, to Said. Postcolonial theory. Okay. Uh, I'm not very sympathetic to myself to uh, to, to you know this kind of uh, uh, approach. Uh, also traces itself to uh, to Said's uh, Orientalism. But I find that, you know, this, the post-colonial, first of all, the post-colonial theories are all, happen, all are in the West. Okay. So it seems to be a problem of uh, yani, emigre intellectuals living in, in, in the West who have evolved a certain discipline which is almost closed on itself. Right. Okay. And they have evolved their own jargon, all right, which uh, someone like myself who is you know, won't be accepted. Uh, not, uh, I find it difficult to understand. Okay, <laughs> because uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm it, it, it's, it becomes like an inside joke. That's right. I'm not part of the inside, and in, I'm part of the outside. Okay, uh, uh, but supposedly, their main concern is this outside. Okay, but we, we, you know, we can't quite understand what they are. Uh, well, they what they are up to, what they are doing. They okay. are apologetic and they accept nobody except among their own. Among their own, yeah, okay. This is, uh, so it becomes a closed shop. This, uh, And actually, I just received a, you know, a paper, I haven't read it yet, from an Indian scholar who is, uh, lives in, uh, uh, he's at, at Duke Uni University, who is making, it seems, from the title and from just looking, also a, you know, thorough critique like that of uh, the subaltern uh, studies field okay, uh, uh, over there, and there is some in India. And there is someone like Ajaz Ahmad uh, also, you know, uh, who being, you know, uh, an intellectual who is, you know, living in India, residing there and, and so on, and looks, you know, with a suspicious eye at this coterie of uh, uh, Critics uh, and the discipline they have evolved as more self-serving, okay, over there than helping India or Egypt or uh, or the Arab world. Uh, that's a critique of Professor Lewis too. Over there, say the, this it was self-serving to Middle Eastern studies uh, and uh, actually sort of other of. Uh, uh, Professor Lewis's uh, yeah, it serves them yeah. over there much more than it, like Martin it, it helps us. Martin Kramer's article, the Tower. Uh, yeah, I know, but uh, you know, yeah, Towers. Uh, I, I think this is, you know, not. not I, I, I looked at it. And it's not a serious, really. It's not serious stuff. Okay, so we'll go to uh, the idea that uh, the uh, Orient believes in the unseen while the, the uh, Western uh, will have a different kind of system. You mentioned that. If you can explain that, because I couldn't understand. Well, you see, now, the... Uh, Believing... The, yeah, yeah, some... some this is MacDonald, okay. Uh, he's trying to explain, uh, say, to writing to the, uh, uh, to the West, all right. Uh, you want to close the window? Yeah, it's okay. Huh? Maybe. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Close it. Okay. Yeah, after the secularization of Europe, of the European educational uh, system, 
of the European universities and, and, and so on. Okay. You can record the fact that right, belief in the unseen, al ghaib yani, okay, uh, has come down in a place like Europe and still very high uh, in a place like the Arab world okay, or the Muslim world. You can record it as a, uh, as a fact. Just as you can record that in England or France or Germany, church attendance okay, has been on the decline. Partly it's disbelief, you see, in the unseen. While with us, okay, uh, it's still very, you know, mosque attendance is still very high. Okay, yeah. If the Orientalist, if the Orientalist is recording this as a fact, all right, then I defend the fact. It's true. But if you are saying, you are turning this into an eternal fact, okay, that, for example, the Europeans were always like that because of the, the genes or the, you know, the gray matter in their head. And we are always, we were always like that and we will always be like that, okay. Because also of, you know, our genes or gray matter or something uh, like that, then, of course, I will attack it, uh, right. So here, Edward, I think, does not distinguish between whether MacDonald was simply recording a fact, okay, or whether he was making a judgment, a permanent judgment about a permanent characteristic of Occident and Orient. Okay, I have to, I look, I think I look, more, you know, in a more discriminating way to say that if Gibb or... Uh, McDonald and so on, mean to record the fact, it's right, it's true. And I was, for example, in Japan. All right. I immediately recorded that in Japan, there are no gods. Okay? The word God doesn't mean anything. Yani here now we say, Ya Rabbi, Mon Dieu, my God. Okay? There, these words mean nothing. Okay? So I can record that, that fact. All right? But I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I, you know, I'm not making a permanent judgment for all time. All right, that, uh, can, can we separate you from your findings, or we have to associate you with your findings, or the subject matter you are analyzing? Do we have to know who's, do we have to say who's saying it, or does it really matter? Can we separate the speaker from the subject? Sometimes, sometimes. I mean, suppose you are uh, uh, talking about church attendance in, uh, in Europe and its decline. All right, you can record the fact, regardless of who is, uh, you know, you can start go back to Max Weber yeah. if you want, okay. Uh, uh, so when should we? When should we make association? Because he's making the I don't association. Think, I, I don't think there's a, you know, a, a, a general rule, you know, rule about, uh, about this. It, you know, I think I, every case has to be examined on its, uh, uh, on its uh, uh, merits. Uh, merits. Yeah. Sometimes uh, it, it makes a difference uh, if uh, uh, someone, say, is a Christian priest, for example. Uh, uh, you could, you know, uh, and he's dealing with, uh, with Islam. It's perfectly legitimate to analyze and look at what kind of baggage he brought with him. Is he apologetic? Is he critical? Sometimes now, committed Christians who write about Islam have become apologetic for Islam because they want to be apologetic for religion in general, okay? And especially for yani, uh, monotheistic religions, all right? Okay. Earlier, you know, if they, you know, they are writing from a more restricted Christian point of view, then they are more critical of Islam. And you take somebody like Esposito, for example. Yes. I regard him as an apologist, basically. Okay, and uh, yeah, you know, that has I'm given the power of secularism in the world, and so on. Uh, uh, the there are various groups in you know uh, in the Catholic Church among the Protestants, Muslim, who feel that we have to come together to uh, uh, defend. Against. The idea of religious faith, yeah. regardless of its content. Yeah. And this happened with Rushdie. You know that Khomeini 
appeal to the Pope. Against Rushdie. Against Rushdie. Okay. Yani, for Khomeini, the Pope Kafir, Ra'as al Kufr. Okay. Still, when it came with Rushdie, he appealed to the Pope. And I mentioned it somewhere in my book. All right. To help him to defend faith. Okay, religious faith, which is under attack. So you put Esposito Haddad in this school? It, which Haddad? I don't know. Uh, 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 I forgot her first name. Uh, she's one of... Uh, she's, I know, I know. Yeah. Hey, uh, she's small. Georgetown School. Uh, yeah. Uh, hey, uh, well, I, I've read one or two things of her, so I really don't want to pass judgment. Uh, but definitely Esposito. Her, especially that she you know, comes from a Christian background. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to, you know, uh, uh, ma ma make a judgment. But had that is, uh, Esposito is clear for you? Yeah, for Esposito, yeah, it's, it's clear. He's, you know, he's so what, what do you think when you see him? He's the one who always comes to the to the uh, forefront whenever the subject of Islam comes up. He's the one who will be uh, analyzing it, talking about it. Would be the right person to talk about Islam or should be somebody more objective or somebody who would see things um, like should bring the seculars too to the to the forefront. Why is always the uh, apologetics or the religious uh, scholars who come out to the forefront? You agree with me, with me that this is usually the case in American well, media? Well, in America. Yeah. I think Europe is, is different. Different. Uh, because I think the, the overall function of religion in, um, in America is very different from Europe now. Yeah, and I have, you know, although, of course, uh, uh, American society is basically is a very secular society. Yes. Uh, okay. And uh, religious faith is, of course, very personalized and uh, privatized uh, and, and so on. But I think uh, their, you know, re religion plays a role in the overall life, even in the business, in the business cycle, okay, which is very different from, uh, from Europe. So the likelihood of finding, you know, an esposito in Europe is minimal. So uh, let's go to Karl Marx and the Orient. I, if you can, uh, this section, maybe if you can tell us something uh, about it. Uh, well, you, you see, um, here uh, I think uh, Edward. Uh, in these th three, four pages in which he dealt uh, with Mark, I felt that he was very reductionist. Uh, and he reduced Marx uh, uh, to not even an Orientalist, but somebody who just swallowed line, hook, and sinker, whatever the Orientalists were, uh, uh, were saying. Okay, about this, and I, I felt this was, you know, a complete uh, caricature. Uh, and what Marx said about the Orient certainly, you know, was influenced by the best information that was available in his day. First, second, it fit into his overall plan for history. Okay. Uh, now, you may reject the plan, uh, you may, uh, etc., but you can't uh, 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 reduce his plan to the supposedly uh, uh, accumulating discourse that the Orientalists have created. Yani, uh, Marx had a uh, 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 yani, uh, master plan of world history which included Europe as well. And he, and he, uh, the analysis that he used for Europe, he transformed to, to India yeah. and to uh, the Muslim world and uh, the Arab world. Uh, okay, uh, now you may, you know, you may fault him on, on that, okay. But Orientalism is not responsible for that. The Orientalist discourse is not responsible for that. Okay. Hegel is more responsible for that, for example. Okay, and, uh, yani, uh, and in 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 uh, in in, in yani, for example, in Europe, Marx was saying that the bourgeoisie was digging its own grave by creating its opposite, namely the proletariat. 
transfer this to the to India. He was saying that British imperialism was digging its own grave because it was transforming India, okay, in a way that it will eventually react on Britain. And in a way, in some general broad way, he was right. Okay. Uh, in uh, uh, in this. This has nothing to do with Orientalism. This is a theory of history uh, about how, you know, uh, you can, you know, uh, someone like Karl Popper will call it is the result of the unintended consequences of the decisions of the imperialists or the unintended consequences of the decisions of the bourgeoisie, okay, in exploiting the proletariat, okay. You make the, prole you know, you, you, you make the proletariat uh, more revolutionary, you want a better proletariat, you educate it, okay? when it gets educated, all right, it, it, it will, you know, ask for its right. Exactly the same. You educate the Indians or the Egyptians, okay? after a while they insist on their own rights, they want the same thing. So, this is not Orientalism, I don't think it has anything to do with Orientalism. So, uh, re reducing you know, the Marxist thesis and outlook on, uh, on, on history and the interaction of, of, uh, uh, of uh, imperialism with the colon colonized world and, uh, and so on to, uh, to Orientalism is, I think, a, 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 a big dis dis you know, disfigurement. So, and all in all, I think, you know, his treatment of Marx is very superficial. That somehow Marx, you know, had uh, sentiments for, you know, the colonized world and so on. But then somehow the uh, Orientalist uh, discourse usurped his mind and turned him into a European supremacist. Uh, okay, I, I think this is, you know, doesn't stand any critical examination. And he never went back to, to that kind of uh, Edward. Among he, many he, things he, he never, huh? Among many things he didn't go back to. He, he, yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. I mean, this, he never, you know, uh, developed that. He never went back to it. I think he realized that it, it wouldn't hold water. I mean, it, it, it wouldn't do. So we'll go back to the soft inter interpretation of Said and the hard interpretation. And this is the next section in your, uh, in your article, Orientalism and Dependency. I was wondering uh, what work you're heading in the time. Well, the, yani this is uh, Said. Uh, a lot of people got angry with me on this uh, section. Uh, you see, this comes towards the end of the book. Said again, going back to the problem, telling the Americans, but you're vital interests are in, uh, Arab world. In, in, uh, in, in the Arab world, okay? Uh, why don't you act on them, okay? Get rid of the Orientalist discourse, look at the facts without the, you know, refraction in the prism of Orientalism, hmm. and you would see, you see, uh, 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 that your interests are in, in, in the Arab world. Uh, and anyway, the Arab world is, and he says, you know, there is, is, is a satellite of the West anyway. Uh, uh, okay. Um, and it's as if here he is uh, yani falling back in a more sophisticated way on the uh, traditional argument to the, uh, that tells the American, look carefully at your interest, do what is in your interest, and you'll find yourselves on the side of the Arabs. At the same time, there is the more radical, uh, revolutionary Edward uh, uh, Said, okay, uh, who supposedly wants the Arab world to undo this uh, uh, you know, relationship, the satellite relationship to uh, 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 with the West, especially in those days, there was you know the dependency theory, okay, yeah, which uh, uh, thought that you know uh, you know the only way is is to really to break to make a you know a a, 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 a break you know in the relationship with the. Uh, uh, with the West to be able to build to build yourself, okay, and 
uh, Edward in this section of the uh, uh, of, of the book tends towards the more you know conservative traditional way of seeing the relationship between the Arab world and the uh, uh, and, and the United States, and I criticized it that it doesn't really fit with the more radical uh, approach. And I mentioned some of the more radical names there, uh, yes. th- uh, the th- th- theoreticians uh, yes. uh, on uh, on this. Um, Paul, uh, Paul Baran and... Uh, Paul Baran uh, and... and uh, uh, Gander Frank, yeah. Pierre Jali. Pierre Jali, the Jali. French, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, the... He, Yanni, I would have assumed that the overall logic of the book would lead to a position nearer to these people, okay, than to telling the Americans, you know, wake up to your interests in the uh, in in the Arab world. Was that later developed by you mentioned later Adonis and others? Uh, Adonis, and uh, my uh, not the my, my problem with Adonis was the division of the world again into Orient. An Occident, and each has permanent characteristics. Okay, and you know, yani, uh, east is east, and west, west is west, west, and the twain shall never meet. And he and he, he, he come to believe in that, and even uh, believing in asala for him or turath means means going back to the to. Yeah, to uh, Adonis did not use so much the uh, the terms of. Asala, you know, others did uh, yeah. in the in the debates of the sixties and so on. Uh, uh, well, Elias Khoury and some of the others. This was, I think, a short passing phase with them under the impact of the Iranian Revolution, of the Islamic Revolution in Iran. Uh, so they. Um, I, I think Hazem Sari I mentioned in the Arabic uh, edition, uh, not in the uh, because he's not uh, you know, he, at least.